So, ladies, ready, go. Undress the baby. You got to change the camera, too. We do have to recapture the art of breastfeeding in our culture. When you're talking about the health of infants, it is the number one thing that needs to happen, is a baby needs to be nursed, needs to be held, needs to be cuddled, cared for. Not only is breastfeeding the superior nutrition for a baby and perfectly suited for their tiny little digestive system, you know, decreasing their risk for obesity, childhood cancers, increasing their IQs, decreasing their risk of ear infections and respiratory infections. Not only does it do that, but it's a whole infant support system. And that's why we have lactation accommodation laws, and we do that at the church as well. A whole environment is changed by a nursing baby. Um, the children see that that's the natural way to feed a baby. They have those memories of their mom nursing their brother or sister, of, of bringing a pump if she had to go to work. You know, they have all of that memory, all of that culture of breastfeeding in the household. You know, all of the paraphernalia, what does a breast pump look like? What does breast milk look like, right? And so um, it changes the whole environment, the whole family, all the men, the women, the grandmas. When there's a breastfeeding baby in the building or a breastfeeding mother, there's something changed on your job. She has to go and pump. She's got to stop being at the counter or register, go somewhere other than the bathroom, a nice space where she can relax and she can pump. And so even at a job, they're like, oh, okay, Gracie has to pump twice a day during this time. So wherever you have a nursing baby, it changes the whole environment. It's a whole infant support system. Everybody is kind of helping mom to nurse or to express. And what does that mean? They're taking on something that she was doing during that time. If it's, if it's uh, the space, they're giving up some office space, or if it's uh, her client load, or if it's chores around the house. You're really building a whole support system for the mother just because she's breastfeeding. So what you're gonna do is put it on your head. Yes, everyone, put it on your head. Don't take it down until we tell you time. And you're gonna draw a picture of you and your baby with it still on your head. Go! <laughs> Draw a picture, like that. Draw a picture of you and your baby. All right, you guys watch them now. Don't let them take it down a little over here. Because that's what I would do. <laughs> you can hold it. Uh, don't look at your drawing, no. Oh, you can hold it. All right. 
Draw a picture of you and your baby. You done? Wow. Okay, I need some people to come come with me. Now, turn, take your paper down and put your name on it. Put it on this side. Put it on the other side. Put your name on the other side. Don't draw no more on your baby. We'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you guys know the winner. Yes. First baby shower. I had never heard of anything like that before. Anything like a community baby shower. It's like, really? How did you find that? Um, well, I go to this church. Well, my mom goes. She's a member uh, of Grace Bible Fellowship. So that's how I knew because it was here. And also, I'm a peer counselor. So they were handing out flyers like, do you want to be a peer counselor? And I was like, perfect. I'm pregnant and I would love to know more about breastfeeding so I signed up for the class which is five weeks and completed it they gave me a certificate they honored people at the baby shower which was great um, they were surprised that I was there because <laughs> I'm so close to my due date so and they thought I was gonna deliver there I was like no I'm not don't worry so that was fun it was really good and insightful and I enjoyed it. So I participated in the duck game. I don't know, they had little rubber duckies. One pregnant lady was on this side and the other pregnant lady was on the other side with a tin can full of water. So you had to put your ducks in and whoever can blow them across got a prize. So I was like, <sighs> and it's funny, you know, cause you're practicing breathing when you actually go into labor. I guess that was the point of the um, game. So I lost though, unfortunately, but they still gave me a prize. I got a, I think I got a piggy bank for my daughter. So that was really fun. <laughs> they had plenty of stuff to give away. I would say like tables and tables and I took lots of pictures, so maybe. I got two right here. Okay, I want you guys on either side of the oh, table. You got three people here. <laughs> and I want you to pick one of these ducks. Nice. Okay. Pick whichever duck you want. Now I want you to put your duck there, and you put yours there. What you're going to do, you're going to blow your duck across the pond. <laughs> Wait a minute, you got to stand them up when I say go. You ready? Uh-oh, this duck don't want to work. We got to get you a new duck. Turn them around. Ready? Go. Blow them across the pond. But what I like to think about is, what does that look like now for, for a new mom, first time mom, first time African American mom? Well, she oftentimes has never seen breast milk. She oftentimes hasn't grown up in a household that, where she could see the whole dynamics of breastfeeding and everything that she needs. Um, and she's been bombarded by images of breasts as sexual objects of, you know, striving to have a small waistline and, you know, her breasts are as, as accessories. You come against that and just the general kind of formula is, e is easier American uh, way that's affecting all moms. And, and the fact that African American moms are more likely to be less educated and have less income you know, in jobs that may not necessarily feel like they are going to support breastfeeding 100%, they might be able to replace you, or even the fear of being replaced. Um, and the lack of social support, you know, because of the high single parenting. And so this mom is facing far more barriers than, than most other moms. And then she gets her baby in arms and doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know that the baby is gonna be fumbling at the breast. She can't see a bottle, which is what she's used to, to see how much milk the baby's getting. 
The baby starts crying. She thinks she's, she doesn't know what she's doing. She thinks that the baby's not getting enough. She's not, she's, she's wondering if, if she's gonna be able to breastfeed and work, because she has to work. And oftentimes those moms within the first week just stop even trying to nurse. That's the situation that we have now. And so the Mew Project is trying to contact moms while they're pregnant. And that's why this intervention is just to pregnant moms. I know that there are other showers that are just for babies, right? Or, you know, before or after they deliver, but at, at, the, at the Mew shower, it's only pregnant moms because we don't want to offend moms that have an older baby and they're using formula. We don't want to be talking about breastfeeding and then make them feel bad. And so we want to do early intervention and we invite all these pregnant moms so that they get all the information that they need. Where do you get a breast pump? Is, there's a breast uh, lactation accommodation law that your organization has to comply with. Um, we have peer counselors here to show you how much milk a baby needs. A baby's tummy is so tiny when he's first here. If he only nurses, um, you know, and gets a drop at each feeding, that's all the baby needs. And that's why um, breastfed babies are not obese. They regulate. They stop nursing when they're full, as opposed to a baby, you're just drip, dripping formula down his throat. And so these peer counselors that are being matched right now in our follow-up session, they not only help them as far as having somebody to talk to, um, you know, when you're single parenting, but it's also somebody to link them into WIC services, somebody to link them into do, you know, domestic violence services, relationship support services. It, a big part of their training is referrals. Yeah, All right, what's his favorite food? There you go. That is should be an easy one for any women. What is his favorite, favorite food? food? What number are we on? Five. Five. Okay, are you guys putting number five? Number five, what is his favorite food? Okay, number six, would she prefer a movie and dinner or a romantic picnic on the beach? <laughs> what does she want? Movie and a dinner? Or not oh, Alameda Beach. Just think yeah, not Alameda Beach. Beach. <laughs> Let's just imagine a, another nicer beach. beach. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, all right, next one. What is his favorite sports team? What's his favorite sports team? Uh, uh, uh. Let's be, uh, Should we be more specific? No. Okay. no, 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 no. What's his favorite sports team? Okay. It could be basketball, it could be football. It could be whatever. His sports team. Just pick who he's just crazy about. Watch. All right. All right. Second to last, what is her favorite perfume or scent? What's her favorite scent? No, I just, um, would hope that really all pregnant mothers are revered, that they get the time that they need to rest, you know, to, to enjoy their pregnancy. And it really does take a whole community, you know, helping them with chores and with meals and transportation and links to services. And that's what the Mew Project is, is all about. So my hope is that when you see a mom pregnant and she's juggling other kids or trying to do her groceries, you know, get her groceries to the car, that we as a community help. That if we see a homeless pregnant mom, we go out of our way to try to link her to a shelter or bring her some clothes or um, connect her to WIC. And that's kind of the message of Mew. Um, we're targeting African-American moms because they have the worst 
health outcomes right now and we're narrowing those gaps. But I would just challenge anyone that old, young, when you see a pregnant mom, they need help, they need support. They need support while they're pregnant and they need support when that baby first gets home. And I think we could uh, decrease uh, a lot of child abuse, you know, a lot of CPS referrals, a lot of moms going through depression and anxiety, a lot of kids being neglected, a lot of poor health outcomes. We could change a lot of that if we looked at pregnant moms differently. All right, now you guys know where I'm going with this, so you can get your little tip together while I'm going down the line. Were you here this morning? All right. Um, so three, 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 three hours, three days, six months. Yeah, three, three, six. Three, three, six. And what does that mean? And three hours for breast milk to be out, and then three days in the fridge, six months in the freezer. Very good. Come on now. You can grab a gift. You were here this morning, and I saw you. What did you learn? Breastfeed as long as possible. Breastfeed as long as possible, yeah! Boy and girl. Oh, you have twins? We got twin gifts. Ira, where are the twin gifts? Oh, you can follow Ira. We got some beautiful twin gifts. All right, and your name? Maria? Yeah. Were you here this morning? Yeah. I learned that breastfeeding is the most important thing. Breastfeeding is the most important thing you can do. And you have a boy or a girl? A boy. A boy. Go right over there and grab a gift. Hi. And so that's where my passion stemmed from. And what fuels it is that every time I see moms in need or those special cases where uh, their infants wouldn't have survived or the moms wouldn't have survived or their situations are made better, it just fuels me on to continue doing the work.
one thing that I'm finding um, is that when you counsel the family about breastfeeding, the dads, the moms, even the baby brothers or sisters, the grandmas, they get it collectively as a whole and they understand that it's better. And sometimes um, in the black community, the, the breakdown of the family has happened since history. So now that the family is starting to become a unit again, that, that they need to understand the information collectively as a unit and not just counsel the mom, just counsel the dad. When you counsel them together, they can work collaboratively to get this baby breastfed. And then when um, when the woman gets emotional, because there are times that you just feel like, I can't do this. The husband or the boyfriend or whoever is there to step in and support like, yes, you can. Tell me what you need, what I can do to help you. We're helping to build those skills up so that the family can can thrive as a whole. The mom, the dad, mm -hmm. the baby, the grandparents, whoever needs to be involved to support that family. So the, um, that's one thing I think this program does really well. Is it includes the whole family. And when peer counselors step in, um, they're dealing with their own family issues and they try to bring their um, the information and things that they've learned to another family that may be in the same situation or a similar situation to help um, and link them to community resources and to um, other people that may be able to help them to overcome that so that the family unit can become stronger.